Good evening. With a lot of information load since morning and with burning questions on your mind, I request you to give a few more minutes. Uh, the idea is to stress on the relevance of research and data analysis even in emergency settings. Uh, again, I have to own up that this is not my original presentation. This is a presentation which was done in MSF UK office by Stefano and I am presenting on his behalf over here. Uh, but it's good to know that I was in Yemen uh, three times in different parts of the country and as my predecessor explained, Yemen has been through a lot. Uh, the context is very complex. The activities is uh, also dynamically changing all the time. So it's just to show how we try to figure out what was the need for the population and try to adapt to the services. And I would be taking pride in saying MSF almost like achieved to manage something in a very volatile context. This is still ongoing, thanks to our colleagues there. So we were, we are going to talk about the activities of an MSF supported hospital quite close to Thais, where intense fighting has been taking place for more than a year, a sort of siege-like activity. For a year, and now still we are running the facility. So this, Map shows where we are in MN, at least focus. So the hospital which we are talking is somewhere between Yip and Thais. We do have facilities in Yip, a tertiary level referral hospital from the MOH. In Thais, there was OCA having a maternity and child and trauma center as well. And then we, the Al-Qaeda was a secondary level MSF supported hospital. We prefer to call it as Kilo instead of Al-Qaeda, which is for us a little bit not very okay. So at the beginning of 2016, we took over the hospital in the Ip Governorate, the Kilo Hospital. So this map shows you how the political or the military situation is there and how it is relevant to our context. Just to add a word, the green portions are the portions which are sort of with the coalition or the coalition supported government. And then the purple areas are the, the I, would in, uh, I would say it is a faction of the who's fighting the coalition support. Um, then, then you have also the, uh, the Al-Qaeda actually areas which are dominant with them. So it's a sort of like they were having parallel governments which also impacted our activities to some extent because I remember in Ibo Hospital that you have the government regional hospital and then you have a parallel hospital for the Houthis. They are one system of referrals, they are one system of taking care. So it was, it was not very easy working in that. And, but it was very good for us in Kilo that every party agreed to respect MSF rules of not having weapons inside. Uh, we initially started the project with the idea that we thought because of the intense fighting happening over that in, in that area, we would receive and treat a lot of civilian wounded patients. But we, when we analyzed the data, we found that it was interesting to note that we were looking much more beyond than violence due to um, weapons alone. So the Kilo Hospital, as you see, is a very nice hospital in a very beautiful place. We had an emergency room with almost around six beds, one OT, two ICU beds, but we did not have ventilator capacity. We had a 50-bedded IPD, which included post-op, female, male, and pediatric as well. And the maternity section was being run over by MOH and supported to some extent by us. Uh, I was there when they were preparing to start the hospital and then one evening they were still installing and then they got the first patient who came in with appendicitis, interestingly, in an area where there is fighting all around. So our first patient to be operated on was an appendix patient. This is a standard data tool we use in most of our emergency projects. I will explain in a moment how it was 
relevant to use this tool and how much information we could get from that. The basic objective of this study was to assess the quality of data from the Kilo Hospital and how the standard reporting could help us figure out the needs of the population and also to review the activities of the first 11 months, whether it was of relevance to MSF to be intervening there. The data basically comes from the ER register mainly. I will be talking only about it, the, but it's also linked with the OT register, ICU register. We, the data is collected uh, with, our, with maintaining confidentiality, so we just put the initials and a unique identifier number. But the IPD data, we just go in for the aggregate numbers. So, so in this, the, there is a column called the, uh, the arrival time of the patient. And then you also have a delay to arrival, which indicates like whether there was a problem in access for the population to access our health services. There was, uh, there is a column which is called referred by, which is also indicates how the population, whether they came by themselves or whether we had other hospitals referring them and whether transportations were available. We have to take into account that moving from, the idea was close to be around ties. Imagine there were so many checkpoints that the patients had to pass through to reach our service event. So it was not easy for the common people to, to cross the checkpoints if they belong to one faction or the other. Uh, the ambulance services even have to undergo the scrutinization, be with proper papers or something to access the services, which was also interesting in this context. And then the time of initiation of care would reflect upon our ER efficiency. Um, there is, uh, the diagnosis gives an idea of what we are primarily looking at. And the procedures form, unfortunately, in this project, because of the emergency context, we couldn't, uh, we, could, we could have gone a little bit more in that, but we would see that in the succeeding slides. The volume of activities, this shows the resuscitation room and the ER room. We had 8,411 consultation during 11 month period on 6,000 and odd patients, which is probably a little bit controversy. Probably the rest of them, the discrepancy is due to the follow-up consultations wrongly being entered as a first time year. The median age of the patient was around 20 years and predominantly male. The type of activities, surgical and non-surgical. So when we talk about emergency room, we are talking about like surgical and medical emergencies. Primary aim was stabilization, and if it's stabilization, surgical, it probably will be in our OT, except for complicated neuro, ortho, complicated ortho vascular injuries, which we had to refer. So coming to the surgical breakup, this is interesting because we expected trauma violence to be a bigger one than the trauma accidental. And we found that trauma accidental, which was mostly because of motor vehicle accidents, falling from height, children falling from height, injuries, fractures, and all sorts of things. Acute abdomen to some extent and C-sections equally because we had the MOH facility. Uh, this is about triage by color. We were using the typical four level triage system of urgent, immediate, delayed, or palliative. And interestingly, we found that those people who access our services were 4,000 was yellow cases, and the red cases were 900. The green, normally it's the green sometimes, or red, but then it is interesting to note we had the large number of yellow cases. And then coming to the outcome with the triage color, the number of patients discharged was 4,000. Admitted was 1,500, so 465 default died, and then you have the referred. When I say referred patients, these are the patients who were referred to the next level of facility, next level of care with MSF referral letters. And you have a large population of discharged patients with the yellow and red cases. 
So let us go to the individual breakup of this. So in the green cases, 687 people were discharged and uh, around 10% were admitted, which probably is uh, over triaging. Coming to the yellow cases, 386 people were discharged and 1,200 and odd were uh, admitted, referred, or probably died, which is acceptable, you would agree, because uh, most of the discharge also means they went for further consultations, which MSF was not normally level referring. It is to be understood that uh, the orthopedic cases, MSF believes in doing external fixation in emergency situations and not internal, where the population demand in Middle East was more about internal fixation and then they would go on their own to Yib Hospital or to their private practitioners to get them. Or probably there were cases which were admitted in IPD, stabilized after a couple of days of treatment were discharged home. The red cases seem to be fairly equally doing good for be compared with the outcome. So it is accepted norm from the American College of Surgeons that over triage rate of 50% and under triage of less than 5% is acceptable in emergency situations. Um, coming to the procedures, this is a breakup like uh, we couldn't, is one of the limitation was not being able to train the staff who are entering the emergency room data to correctly capture the information into our books, even though we did a lot of procedures. Uh, the trends during the 11 months, you can say that the community acceptance of our hospital was relevant, was very good because you see the case numbers going. And interestingly, the surgical and non-surgical at the end of month 12 is almost like equal. Uh, there was also an increase of women to access our service for cesarean section. Uh, let me remind you in MN, the repeat cesarean is almost like 15% and more. So women were happy to come to our hospital in the beginning. It was not easy for them to access our service. So the conclusion is like, yeah, standard reporting in emergency room, the data, whatever we try to collect when waves of injuries or people are coming into the emergency room in a very complex uh, security situation is reasonably adequate to, do, to help us identify what are the needs, what is our efficiency of care, and to, to go in for more in-depth investigations of where we want to focus our activities. Uh, there's also an improvement needed in long-term assessment of what happens to the patient outcome, how the patient was referred to our own setup or outside, or where's the patient ending and what is the recovery rate or uh, disability or whatever is happening. Uh, it's good to identify that, okay, we, we still continue to work because the numbers show that people are accessing our service and the need is still there. And it is interesting to note that there is a shift from the original target patients of surgical and now non-surgical are almost one and equal. Of course, we still need to work on our over triage the limitations of this study is we didn't have, this is a retrospective study with the uh, approval, because it was a retrospective study, we didn't need uh, the um, medical ethical board review, but it was okayed by our Geneva control, operations control. There is, uh, we couldn't control the, the data when we were doing, sorry, when we were running the, when we were collecting this. The procedures again underreported, um, the no long-term outcome data is possible with this limit, with this study. Um, so, if you have any questions for me, but before that, I would like to thank all the past, present, and future workers who still continue to work in Killer Hospital, and with the cholera coming in, it's still getting more busy. All right. I'll take one question. Santosh has got his hands up. Yeah. Uh, um, on questions, uh, just three questions. I have. It's like uh, uh, two. One is that uh, what, is, what was the situation? Of the, did you have any anesthetist 
uh, assistance and if there was any assistance uh, why didn't you start an internal fixation because like uh, um, like internal fixations are quite common in all all ward settings now so it's like um, it is a giving a, a final solutions to the patients and patients uh, patients with the external fixation it's like, like uh, they need to go to back and usually they don't come back at all so if you give an internal fixation it's, like, it's almost like final solution and the third question is like what about the trainings uh, what was the quality of people you got from the uh, from the community and uh, did you have any training sessions for them very aptly asked question from an orthopedic person, like why we didn't go for internal fixation. I understand the MSF policy, if I'm right, Dr. Muni, that in acute emergency context, MSF believes the, the care for the life saving, limb saving procedures, and uh, compared to the amount of people we could treat with a limb saving procedure with external fixator and the luxury of doing an internal fixation. Obviously, we need to match our resources and the needs of the community. It would be ideal, and especially in a country like Middle East, where they're used to more sophisticated procedures, it was very difficult convincing the people, like, hey, look, this is MSF policy, we will only go in for. Second thing, we did have anesthetic people, but we were there for acute limb-saving and life-saving uh, surgeons, and the capacity, we did not have orthopedic wing as such. We were focused more on a life-saving and limb-saving procedures with our general surgeons. At times, if we're lucky, with some of, uh, orthopedic background for that, for one thing. Uh, it was not our uh, criteria when we established the Kilo Hospital to take on all the orthopedic cases because the bed occupancy rate would be quite high as well. We will not be able to have a, such a turnover of the patients. We couldn't afford for that. Uh, trainings. Believe me, it was really difficult to get even the, uh, the normal staff required for the hospital because of the context uh, of keeping people. We tried to do, of course, there is a training all the time going on, every week, every time. But then the, to get the people to come and work in that area was itself not very easy. Yeah. All right. Uh, just one comment. A uh, couple of times in your presentation, you talked about identifying needs. Uh, analyzing uh, hospital data. I think we have to be very careful to infer needs from analyzing hospital data. I think you only get a real sense of the needs if you do a community-based sort of study because, you know, there are a lot of people who do not make it to the hospitals and we don't fully know what the needs in the community are. So I can understand that you analyze patient data to uh, provide better service in the hospital and, and kind of get a sense of uh, patient profiles, but that does not equate uh, automatically to needs in the community. I stand corrected. Uh, it, it doesn't give the full picture yeah. of what is exactly in the community. Yeah, but I understand that in 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 a, in a emergency situation may not always be easy, especially in a in an emergency situation to go and do. Uh, community-based surveys. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, very quick, please. We have to move. I'm sorry. I'm a Thanks. I'm a pediatric cardiologist. Uh, just one thing. In training, uh, when you are dealing with emergency in such a dire situation, we often say is we often follow the criteria: so, do, to, see one, do one, and teach one. That is the best way of training, and it goes a long way. And secondly, uh, when you were dealing with these kind of situations, ethically, all the universal precautions were followed. You never mentioned anything about the universal precautions. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, we take it for granted that in MSF, the quality of care would be at international standards and it's a part of the initial orientation training to any staff to adapt to universal precaution. There's no question with the infection control and That's universal precautions. Most important. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. reminding that and Thank you. yeah, regarding C1, uh, it's, it's we, are more, we are more talking about the emergency room triaging. We are, I would feel comfortable uh, if, if we are over triaging and take a green patient in and admit rather than under triaging an yellow patient who I had to lose later just because the staff were not. As such, emergency triaging is not very well practiced in most of the places. It's even in India, a very new concept of 
like when you receive mass casualties or in a busy emergency room, uh, to make them understand that it is not that the most, uh, most devastating looking injury is the most serious one, to put them into their mind repeatedly to that, okay, you have to do your proper triage if you want to save more lives within the limitations we are having. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.